welcome back. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to clean your fuel injectors to avoid replacing them. Um, these are probably the original fuel injectors. So they have about 130,000 on them and they're pretty old. Again, I didn't have too many problems with the, with the way this car was running, but given the condition of everything else that I've encountered so far, I think it's best to go through these. I'll show you how to do that. So I've watched quite a few videos on YouTube on how to clean these things. This stuff is supposed to be the best. Diesel purge. So these have been soaking in here for months, so they should be pretty loosened up. But what I wanna do is I wanna back flush this thing because there's a little screen right about here that uh, is super, super fine. So what I'm gonna try to do is, this is the tip of the injector, and if you grab it with some tweezers, you can see how I can pull on it. Maybe you can see that, I don't know, it's real tiny. What I'm gonna try to do is I have this really fine copper strand from like a, just any kind of automotive wire. And I'm gonna try to wrap that under there to keep it open. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do this yet, so just uh, bear with me, I guess. Okay, that is now pried open a little bit. So what I'm gonna try now before I do a bunch of other ones is I have some of this clear vinyl tubing. Now what I'm going to do is jam this over the injector so we get a good seal. Now I'm going to take some of this diesel purge and I'm going to put it into this tube and let it flow backward through the injector. Alright, I don't know if that copper wire opened the injector enough to backflow. All right, so the only difference is this has the really fine wire trying to hold it open. This has a slightly thicker wire. Wow, I can see that one draining. The only question is, is it getting out here? Or is it coming out the middle? So this is still holding this open. But what I'm gonna try to do is put this over the wire so I get a good seal on the outside. All right, so now anything that goes in here should theoretically come out the middle. So there we go, three different types of wire. This one is draining, but again, I think it might be coming out the back here because I see some moisture. Well, we'll come back tomorrow. All right, it's been a day. Let's see, uh, the one with the large wire, largest, that's completely drained. Although it honestly looks really clean. I'm not sure this is worth doing because these things have been soaking in this stuff for, I don't know, two months. Um, it looks like the one with the smallest wire, the wire diameter was so small that this uh, barely went down. The other thing that I'm wondering is, yeah, the ones, these two that have the smaller wire, I tucked them down next to that tube to keep the wire from sliding out. Um, I think some of this solution might have been getting out around that wire. On this one, when I tried doing it, it leaked so bad that I had to put the wire upward. So, this one is dry, so all of that had to have been flushed through there, so that's pretty good. I think what I'm going to do next with these ones is just blow them out with compressed air, or maybe some carb cleaner, and we're going to look at the spray pattern and make sure everything's good. All right, so this isn't a super scientific test, but again, this car was running okay, somehow. We're just gonna see what the spray pattern looks like. It's just a uh, carbon choke cleaner. That did not work at all. All right, so what I am gonna do is just to use a syringe, 
jamming it back here and what I'm gonna look for is even, no streams. Alright, so this didn't quite work out how I planned. I really wanted to salvage these things, but after analyzing the spray pattern, I don't think it's going to happen. So I did wind up buying some new injectors. Because this is a budget build, I will tell you that if you find injectors for a Saab 900, they're about $20 cheaper than for a 911 and it's the same part number. So definitely buy six injectors for a Saab 900. Okay, so fresh injectors, let's install them. So one thing I forgot to do when I installed this stuff was stake in these injectors. If you remember right, I had to grind that little stake away with a Dremel tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stake these in here with a screwdriver and a crescent wrench. What I really don't want though is to have, to have chunks of metal <laughs> fall down into the injector area. So maybe I should put something in there first. So you can see on the injector, there's a little turn down area right here. That's where that O-ring needs to go. We're going to, again, as always, lubricate the O-ring just because lubrication makes everything easier. Wow, these are hard to get on there. Let's see if uh, adding a little more silicone grease will help. Yep. When you push that in there, you should feel it snap in a little bit. Now all we need to do is tighten all the injectors, but I'm gonna do that all at once. Once you get these O-rings kind of halfway on, what I'm finding helps is put a little bit of lubrication on the inside, otherwise you could risk tearing them. I did tear one already, so when you order these, make sure you order extras in case you damage any during the installation. Now it looks like my fuel lines are bad. This is just the outer sheathing. The actual lines themselves look great, so I don't see any reason to replace them. Looks like the injectors are a 12 <clears throat> and the fuel lines are a 14. All right, so that's about it for this episode. Kind of bummed the fuel injector situation didn't quite work out for me, but you know what? I learned some things and I tried, so that's all you can do. On the upside, I do have six brand new injectors now, so it should probably run awesome. If anyone has any tips on what I could do differently, I'm still gonna have those things soaking in that jar of uh, diesel purge, so leave a comment down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching and stay tuned. Cheers.